Hey guys, I'm genuinely excited about today's video. I hope you can feel that excitement, okay? All right, we are graphing a rational function, okay? And the first thing I wanted to do is just give you kind of an idea of what some of these graphs might look like, okay? I know they look intimidating, but you're gonna do it and be like, oh, that wasn't even that bad, okay? So obviously this does not include what every rational function can look like when you graph it, right? This is just to give you some ideas of what these graphs might look like, okay? All right, but let's go ahead and see what this one looks like. When we are graphing these, we are going to follow some very solid steps, okay? So first of all, we're going to factor if we need to. Second, we're gonna find asymptotes, our vertical. We're gonna check for holes, and then we're gonna look for a horizontal or slant. Then we're gonna find our X and Y intercepts, and then we're gonna figure out the general shape of the graph using our preferred method, which we'll talk about once we get there, okay? All right, so first things first, we need to factor, guess what? Oh, this can't factor anymore, so we're good. Step one's done. All right, second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, um, see if there's any holes in our graph and also figure out our vertical asymptote, okay? Now, a hole is formed, that sounds really dramatic. We get a hole in a graph when something in the top and bottom cancel each other out, okay? So say I had factored this and I ended up with an X minus two up here on the top as well. Those would cancel, right? That would leave me with a hole in the graph. Obviously that doesn't apply to this one, but I will link a video in the corner where you can see an example of this, okay? So we checked this does not have any holes, so I'm gonna put a little eh, dash there. We checked there weren't any. Next thing we're going to do is check for our vertical asymptote, okay? Now, vertical asymptotes, I keep, I keep saying the word form, but that just sounds weird. <laughs> they occur, maybe that's better. They occur where my function would have a denominator equal to zero, okay? If you've been doing math in your life, you probably know that we do not deal with zeros in our denominator, okay? So let's go ahead and set this equal to zero to see what our denominator cannot be, right? Oh, I just put y, that should be a zero, sorry. Zero equals x minus two. So I would add two to both sides and end up with x equals two, right? So what that tells me is if I were to plug in two for x, I'd get two minus two, which is zero, and we don't deal with that. So at x equals two on my graph, that is my vertical asymptote, okay? So we like to represent this on our graph with a dotted line, okay? This isn't really technically part of my graph. If you were to put this into a graphing calculator, you probably won't see a dotted line. I mean, maybe there's a setting you can turn on or something to show it, I don't know. But most likely you won't see it. But when we do it by hand, we like to represent it with a dotted line, okay? So that is my vertical asymptote. Also keeping in mind, there could be more than one, okay? Obviously in this, this example, there's only one. All right, the next thing we do is we check for horizontal and slant asymptotes, okay? You will not have both, okay? So for this one, we follow a set of rules that I will show you. Okay. If you're wondering why these rules are a thing and why they work, I'll link a video in the corner explaining that. Okay. All right. For these, we look at our degrees. Okay. So a degree is the highest exponent on the top and bottom. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, I see exactly zero exponents. Well, remember when you have a variable that doesn't have an exponent, it really has a one, right? That we just don't write. So this is really X to the first plus four and x to the first minus two, okay? Now, when we look at these, if the top degree is bigger than the bottom, there's no horizontal asymptote. We check for a slant by um, using long division, okay? If the top degree and bottom degree are equal, like this one, one and one, then we divide our leading coefficients, okay? If your top is less than the bottom, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay. All right. So for ours, the top and the bottom are equal to each other. So I'm going to divide my leading coefficients. Okay. Now the leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent, which in this case, there's nothing there, but there's actually a one, right? This could be one X. Okay. So when I divide those leading uh, coefficients, 
I get one over one, which simplifies down to just one, right? So my horizontal asymptote is y equals one, okay? And I can go ahead and represent that with a dotted line, okay? Now, fun fact about horizontal and slant asymptotes, they can be crossed, okay? Vertical asymptotes, absolutely not, but horizontal and slant asymptotes can be crossed. Now, if you're thinking, why? Why do we even have them if they can be crossed? I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish they had a different name, but I don't know. Um, they can be crossed, but they still help us understand the shape of our graph, okay? Uh, asymptote is really what our graph is approaching, so it still helps us understand what our graph looks like, okay? All right, since I had a horizontal asymptote, there is not a slant asymptote, okay? All right, next thing I want to do is figure out my x-intercepts, okay? So for that, I'm going to plug in 0 for y, right? And I got a little card here, so I am not, like, getting a ton of writing all over this. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y to find my x-intercept, okay? So I'm going to have 0 equals x plus 4 over x minus 2, okay? Now, I don't want to deal with fractions, so I would multiply both sides by x minus 2, right? Those end up canceling, and I end up with 0 equals x plus 4. As you do this more and more, you'll probably get pretty fast and not have to do every single tiny step, but I like to write things out, okay? Then we subtract 4 from both sides, so I end up with x equals negative 4. Now, this is not a line, right? This is a point. When I plugged in 0 for y, I got negative 4 for x, okay? So let me go ahead and draw that on my graph. So I know this graph is going to cross at negative 4, 0. Let me write that here too, okay? So you will sometimes have more than one x-intercept. Um, this one only had one, okay? All right, now let's look at our y-intercept. To find our y-intercept, you've probably done this a lot of times. We're going to plug in 0 for x, right? So I'm going to have y equals 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 2, which leaves me with 4 over negative 2, which leaves me with negative two. Okay. Again, this is not a line. This is a point. When I plugged in zero for X, I got negative two for Y. Okay. Let me write, I should have written it over here. Dang it, guys. Come on. All right. So I know my graph crosses at zero negative two. Okay. So look at that. I've got two points. I know my graph approaches these asymptotes. It cannot cross this one. So this is going to look something like this, okay? But I'm not quite done, okay? If we look at this, I know x can't be 2, right? We figured that out at the beginning. But x could be, I could plug in 4 for x, right? Or I could plug in 10, or I could plug in 100, right? And I would get a number. So there's going to be more of the graph over here right? I'm covered. This goes on forever that way. I'm covered on this side. But what about this side? Okay. Um, this is when there's kind of two strategies. There's probably more than that, but there's two I'm going to talk about. So the first thing we can do is remember what we know about functions. Okay. So a function, remember, has to pass the vertical line test, right? So I know there's not going to be any graph over here, because if there was, eh, it would not pass the vertical line test, right? So there's nothing up here. But over here, there could be something either here or here, right? So to figure out where it is, I can either plug in points, right? Like plug in 4 or plug in 10 to figure out, plug that in for x to get a y and figure out the points. The other thing I can do is remember what I know about this problem. Okay. I found an X intercept, right? And there was only one. Okay. So that tells me my graph is not going to cross the X axis. Okay. So that makes me think if it can't cross the X axis, it's not going to go like that. Right. 
but it could go and does go like this. Okay. Now, if you're like, okay, that feels a little too ambiguous for me, <laughs> right? What you can do if, to make it a little more solid, if you want, is pick a point and plug it in, right? So I'm going to plug in three. Let me get my little thingy here again. So we are going to plug in three for X, okay? So X equals three, okay? So I get Y equals three plus four over three minus two, okay? And I end up with y equals 7 over 1. So when I plugged in 3 for x, I got 7 for y. Okay, let's see how good I drew this. Oh, I didn't draw it perfect, but it would be about there, right? Okay, and if you wanted to, you could plug in 7 or 8 or 9 to help you more solidify it if you wanted to, okay? All right. I hope this made sense, okay? Another thing I like to do whenever I'm graphing these is once I get a graph down, which remember, these are a general graph. They don't have to be perfect, okay? But your teacher probably wants just a general idea of what this graph looks like, okay? Once you have that, I like to either plug it into a graphing calculator or into some sort of um, like Desmos, right? To help me make sure that I got the graph right. And if my graph is off, go back and figure out where I got off, okay? So that's a good habit to get into is after you graph it by hand, plug it into a graphing calculator to make sure that you're on the right track, okay? All right, I hope this made sense. Um, I will link a whole playlist with a bunch of other ones where there's more asymptotes, where we've got slant asymptotes, multiple x-intercepts, all sorts of things. Okay, I will link that playlist for you. Thanks.